On the 3rd of September 1972, Mary Peters defied the odds to take the gold medal at the Munich Olympics in the women's pentathlon. At an age when most athletes have hung up their spikes, she delivered four personal best performances to defeat local heroine and local favourite Heidi Rosendahl by just 10 points. In the intervening 47 years, she's gone on to support literally thousands of hopeful young athletes here in Northern Ireland through the establishment of the Mary Peters Track and the Mary Peters Trust. And to ensure that legacy continues, she has taken up the additional challenge of raising an extra £1 million before her 80th birthday in just a couple of months' time. Former international hockey player Ailish Rutherford, who is also chair of the Mary Peters Trust, says there is no shortage of local sporting talent keen to follow Mary's illustrious example. Well, we've just recently ha had sort of 113 applications for funding and we have funded 90 of those and the majority of those are all competing in Europe, at least if not in the world, the world stage. We've had four or five of them were competing in Tokyo at different competitions. So it's very expensive and they could be competing in three or four competitions every year. So obviously they do rely very much on the, the bank of their mum and dad or whoever there is at home to help them. And of course, if they're travelling to places like Tokyo, that's expensive. Very expensive. And also we have a lot of young players that have to have somebody travelling with them. It's not that they can go by themselves, so they need to have another adult with them. So this adds to the expense. I asked Lady Mary if she'd imagined spending the rest of her life helping young athletes as she travelled back from the Olympics with her gold medal. Well, I had set up the track with Malcolm Brody, Belfast Telegraph, because uh, he had phoned me the night of my success in Munich and said, what would you like to commemorate your success? And I said a track, which was a bit silly. No thought, just out. <laughs> uh, so by the time I arrived at the airport in Belfast, they had flags already, Mary Peters Track Fund. And um, by the time I got down Royal Avenue, um, being honoured um, on the open top bus, it was actually a lorry. <laughs> um, people were throwing coins and bits of money onto the lorry. The police were paranoid because there had been a threat to my life. But I didn't take that seriously and I was really pleased. But it took me three years to collect the money to build the track and um, it was interesting but I wasn't earning a lot myself because I was still an amateur athlete and wanted to continue doing some more uh, one more Commonwealth Games so um, no I had no idea how my life was going to turn out and I had no idea at the response of the people of Belfast at my success and of course that support has continued to today with the current race by yourself to raise a million pounds before your 80th birthday? The reason for that is I, I want the charity to continue when I'm no longer here. So I want a legacy that will be there for years to come that young people know that they will have some support if they're showing talent in their chosen sport. The Mary Peters Trust has already supported many uh, local athletes and it's, it's uh, odious to make comparisons but it would be lovely if you would uh, mention some of the names. Well of course our boxers who have been legendary, Michael Conlon and uh, Paddy Barnes and, and Carl Frampton who has gone from strength to strength. We, we gave Graham McDowell a thousand pounds when he went off to America to a university to pursue his golf. That was a long time ago. Alan Campbell, the rower who won a bronze medal at the 2012 Olympics and uh, always credits credits us with giving him the money to buy his first boat. We have Kelly um, Gallagher, who's the downhill skier, who was the first British woman to win a gold medal at the Paralympics in skiing. The four of the girls who are on the Irish hockey team who won the silver medal at the World Championships last year, we've supported them, netball players, swimmers like Bethany Firth who has Paralympic medals. Um, the, there's so many young people who are travelling all over the world representing us. One of those skillful and successful young people is Ulster and Ireland squash player Ellie McVeigh. Hey. 
either travelling to Samoa for the Commonwealth Games, the Youth Commonwealth Games, whereas I represented Northern Ireland. So it was massive, one of my first massive scale tournaments um, on such a big stage. So even just being there and representing it was amazing. Um, rivaling that would be representing Ireland and the world. Um, we travelled to New Zealand, which in itself was um, like an incredible experience. And again, just playing on that platform and being surrounded by players who were all just driving the same thing was amazing. How important is the work of organisations like the Mary Peters Trust to young athletes like yourself? Oh, it's incredibly helpful. Like, I don't think I could say how much. Like, like I said, I wouldn't be here or have many of the successes that I have now without it. Um, and it's really provided me with a lot of opportunity. That view of the value of the Mary Peters Trust is echoed by her coach. Josh. Oh, it's very, very important. It just gives athletes another chance or more of a chance to basically get further along the line than they can get. Um, it's definitely paramount to Nelly's development. Um, the work that, she, that Mary Peters Trust has done for her is fantastic as well. And how do you feel about the fact that Mary, coming up to her 80th birthday, is trying to raise yet another million between now and mid-July this yeah, year? Yeah, it's fantastic. She just doesn't stop. It's, she's always got the athletes' best interest at heart, which is amazing. It's, it's amazing for Northern Ireland. So I asked Lady Mary if that kind of support had been available to her. Not really, uh, not in Northern Ireland terms. I did win a Churchill Fellowship which allowed me to go to America for six weeks to train, which was invaluable in 1972. Not only were the troubles at their height here, there were over 500 people died that year. I didn't have a track to train on because the one that I collected the money for the previous one had was full of potholes, so I did most of my training in Queen's University indoor gym, and I worked full time. I worked for my coach, so it was only when I had time off that I was able to train. So and it was raining, almost like it is today. So it was lovely to go to California, where I was able to train on any number of tracks, schools, colleges, universities, and um, develop the Fosbury flop, which was the high jump style of going over the bar backwards, which I'd just learned. And it allowed me to do that in better facilities. And that made the difference between me being first and maybe 10th. Absolutely, because that was one of the, I think, four personal bests you scored on that day. In it's, it's amazing when you look back on it and you wonder why, but it had to be, hadn't it? I mean, I, the medal was mine. It had to be mine. <laughs> How optimistic are you that you will raise that extra million between now and your birthday? I don't do failure and I've got a great support team behind me. We've got um, Gillian who runs my charity, Gillian Hetherington, and a wonderful board chaired by Ailish Rutherford and they're pulling out all the stops to help me and uh, we're going to launch a book in September which will inspire the next generation of young women and so we're hoping that that will bring in quite a lot of money. I'm doing a sponsored walk with primary schools next week in Wallace Park and there's something every week that is helping me uh, reach my goal. You slipped that piece in about the book almost without me noticing. You have to say a little bit more about it. That's very exciting. Well, you know, the, there's a big um, worry that there only such a small proportion of young women and girls take part in sport in comparison to the lads. And um, I wanted to inspire a generation of young women who would enjoy what I've enjoyed, the travel, the friendship, the good health, you know, and I hope that the book will inspire because it's stories of other people's success, how they got involved, who was their inspiration and their journey through until most of them have, have won a medal of some colour. And um, I hope it'll go into the schools and into uh, everybody's home that has a young lady that might aspire to being a champion of the future. The deadline for Mary's race to a million is in July. Until then, she'll be working tirelessly towards what we hope will be yet another success.